last week I talked about the Mojalicious web framework a little bit, and today I want to talk about the, um, the toolkit that, that makes all of that work. So some of the interesting components in uh, the Mojalicious toolkit <coughs> that enable the framework, uh, I'm just going to uh, go through a few of these pretty quickly. Uh, please feel free to stop me. If you have a question, uh, raise your hand. I will, I will address that. Um, Mojo Date is the first one I'll talk about. Um, Mojo Date can parse and um, print out a variety of date formats. It's very handy, um, very RFC compliant. You can see we can uh, read and write um, epoch dates, RFC 822s, which is the old Apache format, uh, 850, ANSI, uh, 3339, which is, is kind of the ISO standard for date formats. Um, I'm just. Uh, so uh, parsed all those uh, dates and gave, gave us the um, the epoch equivalence here. This is the, the epoch method. Nothing really fancy or, or interesting there other than it's uh, got a very clean and consistent API. Next thing I'll mention is Mojo Log. Uh, this is the logger that's built for the Mojolicious project, but it's capable and powerful enough to be used in other contexts, certainly. Uh, it logs to standard error by default, which makes it great for containers or other foreground daemons. Um, it emits events so that you can subscribe to those logging events from other parts of your system and be notified when something has been logged at a certain level or something like that. It's, it's uh, pretty powerful. I um, can uh, demo that one. Um, so here we have a little log. Um, We've set the default level to warn, and then we immediately change it to debug level so that when I, um, when I run this, oops, oh, we don't get anything. Oh, it went to my log. There we go. So it has the standard, uh, puts the data in there, some, the, the level that the error was logged at. Very nice. Very slick, very lightweight. Questions? Uh, Mojalicious has built into it a URL parser. Um, yeah, this uh, implements a subset of RFC 3986, 3987, and the URL living standard for uniform resource locators with uh, uh, international domain name support. Very, very nice. Also UTF-8, Punicode. So here, the um, once it's that that when you create a new URL object, it uh, parses it, and you can now pick out the parts that you want. Host name, port, the path, query string, if any, and any fragments. And that would print what you would expect. Um, Mojo file. This is the newest uh, utility in the Mojolicious toolkit. It was just written late last year. It wraps a few commonly um, used core modules in, in Perl and gives them a consistent API a lot more like you get with your Mojo URL or your Mojo JSON or some of the other ones. So it lets you do, um, whoops, it wraps file base name, file copy, file find, file path, file spec functions, um, file temp, and IO file. So all of those things get, get uh, are, are inside of Mojo file, uh, allowing you to get this sort of an API where you can get the file object, print its directory name, print its base name. Uh, slurp is the same as a backtick cat file name, roughly, but in a safe way. It uses buffering, so it doesn't, uh, um, <coughs> does everything in a, in a fairly safe way. Mojo DOM, Mojolicious has a DOM parser. It's amazing. It will parse uh, loose HTML, and it also has a strict mode. It will parse strict XML. So here we're going to use the mojo file object that we just did, and we're going to slurp in the contents of some uh, HTML file and stick it in $HTML. We're going to pass that HTML to the mojo DOM and create a DOM object. And now we can use the DOM functions to use CSS selectors and pick out different aspects of the, of the document. Um, this has a, a pretty nice 06. So we're going to 
um, index.html. Well, I should probably show you index.html. It's HostGator's homepage. And I want to pick out um, I want to pick out this line right here, powerful web hosting. Uh, you can see it's inside the ID hosting plans container, and it's an H1 inside of there. And so um, cat. Oops, that wasn't intentional. Uh, so now I can pick out powerful web hosting. Again, that's that's possible. Uh, right here is our CSS selector, where we parse the HTML. Modelicious has built into it a JSON parser. It is the fastest pure Perl JSON parser on the market. Um, it's not even close. No pure, pure Perl parser will be close to any C-based parser. Uh, C-based parsers are at least 20 times faster. But for pure Perl, lightweight, small JSON documents, this is the way to go. Um, it parses, as you would expect, uh, JSON strings into Perl uh, data structures, and vice versa, it takes a Perl data structure and and spits it out as a JSON string. Here we use the file object again to grab a JSON string. We decode that string as a Perl data structure. We can also give that data structure to JSON pointer. JSON pointer implements RFC 6901, JSON pointers, allowing us to use nice path names inside of our JSON document. The, the one there refers to an array index, um, and the rest are, are hash, what would be inside of a Perl object, a, a hash. Uh, uh, dereferences. You can look at this one here. Okay, so I'm going to run JSON. Let's do um, JSON. So here we have a um, some output of some JSON. I want to pick out the price of something, maybe that 1188 or something like that. And so I'm going to be using the JSON pointer. I'm going to look at the first add-on and look at its uh, British pound price, 755. So it's a, <coughs> a very convenient uh, syntax. Now I should mention that in day-to-day -day usage of, if you're writing a modulicious web application, you would never use any of these modules. They're built in to the web framework so that these are simply uh, uh, roles or, or um, components of the system. David? So JSON pointer then would work with pretty much any Perlish data structure that could be represented in JSON. Correct. Okay. That's cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. for, the, for the record, J David mentioned that the um, JSON pointer uh, module will, would work on any Perl data structure that could be represented as a hash or array references. Now we get to the fun stuff, Mojo User Agent. Mojo User Agent is uh, simple to use and easy to set up. Um, I use, I will install Mojolicious several times a week just to use the user agent. It's so nice. Um, it, it, it works, as you can see here, it works a lot like LWP. You import the module, you create a new user agent object, so this is a web client, like curl or, or your browser, and then you invoke the proper method, and here we're using a get, there's post, uh, patch, delete, options, um, and then you can create custom ones if you have a, a custom web server you're hitting. We're gonna hit bluehost.com, and we're going to get the result and look at its body. So this would be um, 08. So we just, that's, that's basically a curl uh, call right there. Nothing, nothing really fancy there. Uh, so right now we have parity with most other user agents, H, uh, 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 HTTP tiny. One thing that those other user agents don't uh, enjoy is integration with the JSON. Uh, Mojo JSON is a part of Mojo user agent. And you don't have to load Mojo JSON. It's just part of the user agent object so that you can hit uh, a JSON document and immediately parse its output. So we would do this. Um, uh, I will do this uh, curl call, curl 
so you can see what the document looks like. Let's uh, shove that through JSON PPE. Uh, so here we have a little JSON document from the Twilio. Uh, we want to read this um, <coughs> message component right here. So what we're going to do in our user agent is invoke the JSON parser and pick out slash message UA no credentials provided. So that's exactly what we're expecting. Mojo user agent also has built into it uh, DOM support. Mojo DOM. So again, you don't have to use Mojo DOM. If you're using the user agent, you just get it. Uh, here we make a call to a Wonderground web page, uh, scraping uh, the temperature and weather from a station in Orem, Utah. We create our, we get our result, we do our web fetch. Then that result object has a DOM parser in it where we can use the CSS selectors. These are the same selectors you would use in a cascading style sheet of your web page. We're going to look at some ID PWS location. It's H2, has some information we want. That's the location. Uh, the current temperature uh, has, you know, we can follow the path down, some classes, and we know that in there we're going to get our text. That's our temperature. We can print it out. So um, temp, I'm going to time this one. We'll run it a couple times to get a that took about a second. <coughs> we'll abort that one after 11 seconds. Okay, there's a second and a half. So that's that's about what I would expect uh, to the uh, Orem City Center Park, 64 degrees. It's nice out there. So that's nice. You get the DOM and the JSON built into it. Um, the primary differentiator, I would say, between Mojo user agent and almost all other user agents, with some exceptions that we can talk about later if you like, is its uh, non-blocking capabilities. Um, I'll apologize in advance. Um, this, um, uh, this may be unfamiliar syntax if you've never dealt with uh, non-blocking uh, code before. Um, if you've used Node.js, you might be familiar with the promises pattern, or, or even just JavaScript promises uh, is a way to do non-blocking without getting into what we call callback hell. Uh, where you have a callback inside of a callback inside of a callback, so you can non-block while you non-block, yo dog, and um, that that becomes very unwieldy code. The Mojo user, uh, the Mojolicious um, framework has uh, gone a different route, but I think uh, once you're familiar with it, is way more uh, clean and uh, fun to use. Here we set up. The first thing we're doing here is um, setting up an anonymous subroutine. This will run only after all of the results have been returned. So for each URL, we're going to do a get request here. So we've got eight URLs, let's say, in that at URLs at the bottom there. Dollar underscore has that HTTP colon slash last blah, 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 has the URL in it. The last um, argument to the get is this thing we call um, delay begin. What that returns is a callback. It returns a, an anonymous subroutine. But as it returns that anonymous subroutine, it increments a counter. You don't have to remember this or know this. Just It's kind of an interesting way to, do, to handle this. It increments a counter. So as we, we, we've set our, this will run when everything's done. We fire off eight concurrent web requests all at the same time. Boom, 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 boom. Then we go into our uh, event loop, waiting for those requests to come back. As a request comes back, Mojalicious user agent will then invoke that callback that it received uh, when, when that, was, that was given when the get request was made. When that callback is, is uh, invoked, the counter goes back down. So those first eight get requests, the counter got up to eight. As each request comes back, the counter decrements back down to zero. When the counter reaches zero, we invoke the last callback in the chain here, which is this one. This receives all of the contents of the, of the previous requests as transaction objects that you can invoke. The, the at underscore, each at underscore is a transaction object that we can now pick out the, um, the location and the temperature and print them out just as we did in the previous example here. This makes uh, for a very powerful and uh, fast experience. David, do you have a question? Sure, okay. Um, So we'll time this one. I'll show you um, 
Here we've got eight uh, weather stations we're going to hit. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll time this. What did we get the last one? It was like a second and a half, two seconds, something like that. Um, two seconds. So this will take as long as the longest request because it's all happening at the same time. All of those requests were fired off concurrently. We just wait for them. And we have to wait as long as the longest one. The longest one took just a little over two seconds. Uh, this is incredibly powerful if you're doing uh, a lot of uh, slow I.O. kinds of operations. If you're making SSH connections, if you're making web connections, you want to use non-blocking calls when possible. Okay, so that's, a, that's concurrent requests with Mojo user agent. Okay, so Mojo user, user agent is a non-blocking user agent. Uh, LWP all by itself, this is just if you did a, you know, CPANM LWP, is a, takes about 30 seconds to install, 12 CPAN distributions. Mojolicious, <coughs> the entire web framework, is roughly twice the size of just LWP. Now if you throw in a JSON parser, the pointer parser, the DOM parser, you're getting a little bit heavier. If you wanted asynchronicity, my favorite really is um, Paul Evans' uh, net async libraries. He has good taste, um, and, uh, and, and those, those also get a little bit hefty. So the entire Modulicious web framework uh, still weighs in smaller than almost all other just user agents. So if you just want a clean user agent, Modulicious is fantastic. Let's talk about Mojo template. Um, Modulus's templating system is uh, very small, but it's very powerful. Uh, Modulus is, itself is not tied to it necessarily, but it does integrate with it. It comes as part of it, and so uh, if you need a templating system, it's there for you to use. Um, let's see. So here we create a template object. This is a string, TMPL is just a Perl string inside of a here document. You can see that we've got uh, little uh, titles and, and things that you would expect uh, for your delimiters. Um, then we invoke the render method on the template object. Uh, that it, we give it the template itself and then we pass in some, in this case we pass in a hash reference. This uh, first vars1 there tells the, the templating system, hey take any any uh, variable, any keys inside of this hash reference and turn them into variables inside of the template. So that's how that title matches up with this title here. Oh, and, and for comparison, template toolkit is about two and a half megabytes to install. Slightly larger than the entire Modulicious distribution. Template toolkit can do a lot more. It, it has a LaTeX parsing and all kinds of stuff. It's a, but it's a hefty solution for, for if you're just doing HTML templating, it's, 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 it's a lot. Want to explain the percent tags, how those work? Sure, yeah, okay, yeah. So a percent tag tells the Modulicious Templar, um, hey, uh, there's some code here we're going to have to evaluate. So get ready. And it provides, it creates its own separate context uh, to, for, for safety, um, turns on taint and turns on some, some other uh, flags. And um, then it will look for, in this case, the, the equal sign tells it we're going to also be printing. So this is kind of like print. When you see an equal sign, it's going to be print. The percent sign just means Perl coming. Equal sign means print anything that comes out. So that's really, we're just, it's just a substitution at this point on this one. Um, down lower, you can see we're just using a per, uh, percent sign to escape the for loop there. Uh, the, the paragraph is outside of the for loop, and so it is it will just be printed, and um, then we use, we're, we're printing dollar underscore, which in a, in a Perl is the default variable, of course, and then we, we escape again the, the closed curly. Let me, uh, let me, I think I've got, so here it is right here. Um, I'll, get, I'll run this for you. Template, uh, hello world, count one, two, three, four, five. A very lightweight but effective uh, uh, templating system. And again, this this just comes part. You don't you don't ever use Mojo template if you're using the web framework. It's it's built in. There's a renderer built in, and I'll show you that in just a moment here. Perl. This is just for diversion here. Uh, in uh, in when you run Perl on the command line, you sometimes do dash capital M, telling Perl we're going to load a module. 
Modulicious made a module called Ojo, so that you can say Perl Mojo. Very cool. Um, uh, Ojo exports single letter functions for your command line enjoyment. Um, uh, R, so the, the, in this first one, what we're doing here is we're, we're setting up a, a modulicious light route, get slash, and we're going to then just print out the current time uh, in a template. Uh, we run app start, and then we actually do a get on ourselves to get the result. That will just give us the current epoch time. Nothing fancy there. Uh, the second one is a little bit more fun. Uh, you have to read it backward. Food.json is our argument. Okay, that's argv. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to invoke f, which is mojo colon colon file, and shift. It's going to be shifting off argv. So we're going to slurp food.json. So now we have a JSON string. That gets passed to J. J is mojo.json. And it will take either strings or data structures. Depending on what it gets, it will do the opposite. So if you give it a string, it will give you a, 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 a data structure. If you give it a data structure, it will give you a JSON string. R is data dumper, basically. And so here what we're going to do is we're going to take the JSON thing, unserialize it, and unpack it and print it out as a dump, as a, as a, as a, as a dump. So I think I called that J to PL. There we are. So if I say. Um, so this is a shell script, really, uh, J2PL. Um, so here's our JSON document, good night, moon. And ta-da. So kind of a, mostly, mostly for uh, one-liners, as you can see, you can do it, get a lot out of a very little effort, other than looking at the man page to remember what all those single letters <laughs> represent. OK. So now I'll get back into Modulicious Light. This is kind of the culmination. You can see we've built all these pieces up. Some of them fit well together. Modulicious Light is what we talked about last week. It is the web framework. Um, it's the equivalent of uh, Node Express, or Ruby on Rails, or Catalyst, or um, uh, Django. There's a lot of web frameworks out there that, that, uh, that fit into this same space. Um, of all the ones I've used, um, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm partial to Perl to begin with, but Modulicious is amazing. Its syntax is clean, and um, once you be, you know, are familiar with it, it's uh, really a joy to use. Uh, so here we invoke the, uh, what we're doing is we're telling Modulicious, we're defining a route. We're going to say, hey, when somebody does an HTTP get on slash, we want you to run this subroutine here. The first thing that's going to happen is we're going to stick um, uh, into what's called a stash. It's kind of like a temporary scratch pad for, um, for, for this request that's also visible to the templating system. Uh, all the things, and that we're going to call that title. And down here you can see in our template, we're going to use it a couple of times there. Uh, you can also, uh, then we're going to render that template. You can also stick things in the stash uh, on the render line. So that's handy, and it matches up with that, that thanks down there. Uh, we are going to render the index template, which is this whole thing right there. This is inline. It doesn't have to be uh, in Modulicious, but it's just convenient if you're just building something tiny. Just stick it all in one file. Uh, this could be exploded out into another uh, location, into an actual file called index.html.ep, and Modulicious knows how to find it and to parse it in the same way. Um, the renderer, where it says render template, that first argument to render tells Mojolicious what kind of rendering we're going to do. In this case, we're going to be invoking Mojo template. Yes? Um, is there a tool that will automatically explode your project? There yes. Cool. Yeah, you can run um, uh, Mojo inflate, and then you're in, in the directory your app is, and then it will, it will chunk out all of the templates and the static files and, and everything else. Very handy, yep. Good question. Uh, so uh, you can also have, instead of render, you can have HTML. Uh, sorry, for template. So that it tells it the content type, and it also tells it uh, what will be handling that rendering. So there's HTML, there's template, there's uh, JSON, which we'll look at in just a moment. And those get passed to the right thing. And the right content type is set, HTML, uh, text HTML, application JSON, whatever it might be, 14. 
and there it is. So we'll just um, light. We'll just run that. Um, get slash. There we go. Um, th those are logging outputs. I could get rid of that by creating a log directory, and it would see that and use Mojo log to write out to a log file. Otherwise, it goes to standard error. Built in. We didn't have any logging uh, commands, if you remember, uh, but we could add some. Uh, here's our template. Uh, all the things. Uh, welcome all the things. That's title. And then down here is the, the thanks that we, that we included in our template. Uh, here we have a JSON renderer right here. And it will take as its argument a data structure and serialize it as JSON and print it out. Cleverly named foo. Oops. Get slash. Uh, there's the time as a string and partly clear for the weather. Don't know if that's an actual weather term. And it sets the content type to application JSON. Very handy. Uh, this is another newish component into Modulicious. It's Modulicious Validator. I, th I think this was written maybe two or three years ago or at least fleshed out as a way to validate form, uh, form posts and things like that. Um, we'll talk about that ad check at the top in just a moment. So here's our controller. This is a modulus light application. We're going to do a post on slash sign up. This might be sign up for anything, really. Um, we have notified the, the validator that we want a um, name must be present. It's required. And when it's there, it must have a size between 1 and 10. And the first character must be a lowercase a through z. The question is, do we stop at the first error? Do we continue? We continue. So we can get all of the errors. Now, you don't have to. You could, you could check to see if any errors have been recorded to this point and stop if you wanted to. If you wanted a short circuit, you can certainly do that. It's, it's, it's up to you. You get to control that logic. But by default, the validation check by itself will not do anything. It just simply records the fact that the validation has been made, whether it was successful or failed, and what any uh, you know, results might have been. Now this last one here, range, is interesting. We're going to ask for a range, and the age must be somewhere between 18 and 40. Range is not a native Mojolicious validator method. We created it right up here. We defined a new check called range. And, and it takes some arguments. The first two arguments we don't use. Um, but validation is the validation object. Name would be range. And then we have value min and max. And we, we decided what that was. And so we decide uh, if the value is less than min or less than max or greater than max, um, we return a true value indicating some kind of error condition. So, but what, what we can use it here in our validation object down below as if it were a built-in size and in and like. Those are built-in, but we can extend this infinitely. And this could be uh, put into some plug-in somewhere. Um, it really, it, it, the syntax is as big as you like. It, it's very handy. Uh, and then finally here, we check to see if there were any errors. Uh, and so, uh, Trang, this is where you would check. You could do that check at every step if you liked. Um, there's a variety of ways to handle that. But this way, you can give the user Here's all the things that are wrong that you need to fix. Instead of, oh, you fixed one, good job. Oh, here's another error. Uh, you know, they have to go. It lets you, uh, you can do it both ways. Uh, 400 is a custom template that I wrote that, that spits out the errors. Um, and then otherwise, we would render, hey, good job, uh, welcome, uh, name. Any questions on, uh, any more questions on Mojo Validator? I'm not going to do a demo, though. This is the one that I didn't have time to finish, so it doesn't quite work, but it's still amazing. Uh, WebSockets, I mentioned WebSockets last week. This is a <coughs> chat server. This is, a, this is an entire WebSocket-based chat server. Uh, well, it's actually, I've shortened it for the screen, but um, the same one that we used last week. Um, Mojulisys has non-blocking WebSockets built in. If you load lib, e or, um, uh, if you say use EV, the EV module, then you will be getting C-like performance in your web sockets. It's uh, in, your, in your event loop. It will be checking those at the level of the operating system. Very, very fast, very powerful. 
Okay, this is test mojo. Test mojo takes a mojo user agent and extends test more with some additional um, HTTP and WebSocket assertions like uh, status is, uh, text is, like, things like that, allowing you to pick out different things. So here in the, th we have two sets of tests here. There are actually six tests that are performed here, uh, two get OKs. What this does, it doesn't check anything about it, only that it was able to communicate with the web server and get a response back. This says nothing about the response itself. That is handled right here. This is, says, we assert that the status should have been 200. You know, when you do a, a 200 OK, right? That's what this is saying. So first, we're able to connect to the web server and get a response. That response should have been 200. We're making that assertion. If that failed, this would give us something, something else. Um, here in this first test, we do a text like. So we're using the Mojo DOM that's built in. And we go and compare it against a regular expression to see if that piece matched. Very good. Down here, we're using the JSON, Mojo JSON, built into the user agent to uh, pick out a JSON path, pointer path, and compare it strictly against a string that we would expect to receive. Uh, there's also JSON like, there's uh, is, is not, has, hasn't. There's a, there's a ton of different ways to uh, evaluate uh, the contents of a response back, and Mojo just implements most of them, and for those that it doesn't, you can extend it. Uh, and here we see the method chaining again. Each one of these methods returns the original test object so that you can, instead of saying t get ok, t test is, t test like, you, you can just chain them off the same object. Uh, it makes for a cleaner, smaller syntax and you can see that, oh, it's really just the one thing. Sometimes you do want to split those out if you want to do a composite kind of test. If this and this, then we need to do some other kind of check. But for, for most things, this makes a very clean syntax. Or those ANDed or ORed? They are ORed. I'll show you. So let's, let's, um, let's run this one. This is 18. All right, that's the same as what we saw on the screen. So we're going to um, create a new test object. We're going to hit Mojalicious and get some things that we expect. Then we're going to hit Twilio and hit, get some things that we expect from there. There. So if any of those had failed, you would see that. Uh, so let's 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 go into. Yeah, let's say this is 201, and let's let's um, add an extra a B in there for some reason. There. So get OK one. We were able to connect to the website. Assertion number two failed. We got a. We were expecting a 201 but we got a 200 instead. Uh, three was fine, four was fine, five was fine, six, exact match for JSON pointer, failed the test. We were expecting uh, down here, but we got instead that. So you can see that it, all of this text I got for free. I didn't write any, you know how in a, in a, in a text test more test, you usually write what you're comparing and then some text. The text is for free and it's very clean and very descriptive. So this is, a, again, you failed two of tests. We have the typical harness output that you would expect. Um, this, um, this makes a mechanization <coughs> of uh, testing web resources very simple and easy to read. In fact, the EIG test automation framework uh, uses test more, or test mojo as its base class, and then extends it with a few other things like um, authentication, so that we don't have to repeat those in the tests. Uh, those, those become a, a, a base class. So when we are testing HAL, we say use test EIG HAL. And, and that knows how to do the authentication and so forth. Uh, very clean. Uh, so you have to use done testing or can you still plan? You can still plan. Okay. Yeah, there's no, there's no uh, that way if a test doesn't occur, you don't get penalized for that. Yeah. Um, any comments, questions at this point? Plugins. Um, a good chunk of the Mojalicious behavior is defined internally using plugins. Uh, this makes Mojalicious a, a true framework, um, easy to extend with a clear plugin API. Um, Mojalicious will even help you write a new plugin with the. So you can see, last week we did Mojo generate app or Mojo generate light app. You can also say Mojo generate plugin, and it will create a plugin uh, that looks a lot like this for you, including some pod, which is amazing. I used to have to change it like you would a H2XS pod. It doesn't actually say anything, but it's there. Um, 
this, um, here we have a, a, a plugin that creates a new helper called toInteger. This isn't the important part. Uh, this could be anything, but there, there's a little bit of relevance here. Uh, this takes a hash reference and a list of keys, and it goes through that hash and, and checks to see, uh, is this key an integer? And, and, and it will integerify it by uh, doing a plus zero on it. It converts it internally to, to Perl's um, uh, an, an IV, if you're familiar with the internals of, of Perl, uh, so that when you serialize this object over JSON, you don't get five in quotes, you get actually the integer five. So this is, this is a, a fairly common use case for this. Now the nice thing, over on the right, over on the right we're using our plugin in one line. We say plugin typecast. And Mojalicious knows uh, it has built into it Mojalicious colon colon plugin as a, as a path it's going to query. You can, you can change that or a, a p append to that class. Uh, so that, um, or uh, to that path so that more plugins can be found in various places on your file system. And then we use the toInteger. Now the controller object, uh, I don't have to use any special syntax, it becomes, when I, by, by me uh, running that, uh, it, loading that plugin, my controller object gets that method as, as if it were a role. In fact, it, under the hood it's treated a lot like a role, a dynamic role. And now I pass in uh, my requirements and uh, foo and bar keys will be converted to integers. Any other keys will not. That's, that's part of the code here. That's uh, worry for time. So if I say, um, yeah, so if I say plug in, get m post. Actually, let's just do that. So you can see I'm passing in a, a JSON document with foobar and baz, all strings for the integers. Uh, foo and bar were converted to integers. Baz was not because it was not in the list. It was not in my list, only foo and bar were. So that's plug-in syntax. It, makes, uh, it allows you to make your um, code clean. It's really just a method call, of course, but, but the way it integrates so nicely. I could now, um, Mojalicious also has a way for me to put this up on the CPAN. Uh, I can distribute my plugins. Mojalicious has, um, last time I checked, over 400 plugins on CPAN, doing things like adding geolocation to HTTP requests based on the IP, SMS messages, uh, DBIX class integration, iCal, email, caching, virtual hosting, Redis connections, MongoDB connections, Discuss connections, PayPal, OAuth2, OpenAPI, Swagger. It's, it's, it, you can do almost anything. And they're all new, they're all recent. <coughs> and they stay pretty fresh. Probably the last thing we'll have time to talk about is Minion. I'm not gonna go through this list. Minion is a job queue. And I will show you, uh, I've got a, a brief one here that I can show you how it works. Um, uh, has a variety of backends. Uh, Postgres is supported out of the box, uh, but there are backends for SQLite, MySQL, MongoDB, Storable, um, uh, FreezeThaw, I think. Uh, it's, it's, um, it allows you to scale your, uh, uh, your, uh, your job queue nicely. It's distributed, uh, very, very slick. So I've got two parts to this. There's the queue part. This is where you add jobs into the queue. And then I've got an example worker that I will show you. So uh, what I do here is I first thing I, is I load the Minion plugin. This is a Mojalicious Lite application. And I tell it, I give it a back of a SQLite. I could be using Postgres here or, or MongoDB or something like that. We define a route, post jobs. Uh, actually, that's going to be, I think I changed that to restart server. Uh, but we, and, and what we do here, so this would be something slow. Like, let's pretend we have some servers that we need to restart, hundreds of them maybe. Um, those are slow operations. You don't want to do those serially, or you'll be taking weeks to do that. So what we do is we say, uh, we're going to enqueue a job. Now that job is called restart server that's defined elsewhere. And we're going to just pass in without any error checks. We, we could probably use Modulus's validator here to make sure that the arguments are correct. Uh, but we're going to enqueue this new job into the, into the job queue, and we're going to say thank you, 
and that's basically it. We, we return it 202, which is uh, accepted, HTTP accepted response. And here's the worker side of it. Uh, if you remember, we added a restart server job that is defined right here. So we've, we're defining a task, restart server. So the worker now says, hey, when I get a, a job and it's a restart server job, I'm going to run this subroutine. Uh, I've added, uh, just to illustrate the, um, the event-driven nature of this, uh, a finished handler that, that something will happen when the job finishes. That's not necessary to do. Really, all the work is done in, these, in this line right here. This might be we log into a, a server over cPanel. Maybe we're talking over a WHM API. Maybe we're, it's an SSH connection. It's something slow. Maybe we're, maybe we're crunching an image or something like that, right? re-rendering it. Uh, this is the thing that takes a long time. This is handled in Modulicious, uh, in Minion, I'm sorry, as a separate forked process so that the original worker process always stays, has, keeps its integrity. Um, there's no, there's no memory bloat. There's no, you know, there's nothing going on in that worker process other than it forks and supervises. How many does it fork? By default, it forks up to four processes, but you can configure that up to thousands. Depends on the capacity of your box and what you want your workers to do. You might just have one worker do one thing, um, and and just spin up lots of workers. There's there's a variety of ways to handle this. The point is, it's a slow operation typically, and um, when that operation finally finishes. Really what I should have done is check the result, and if it were a bad result, I would invoke fail instead of finish, but we're just going to assume it always works and invoke finish here. And that tells the, the queue, hey, this job succeeded. It's done. So let's take a quick look at this one. Um, so we're going to, um, I've got this here. I'm going to start the queue. I'm going to start a worker. This syntax is built into to Minion. You just say the name of your worker. So we have, I have a special worker that's just for handling restarts. And that's the what you saw. And, um, and then you say Minion worker. Down here is my slow. I've got a, a, a little web server that's just slow. It, it takes a, a number of seconds to respond, simulating a server doing a restart or something like that. Okay. Um, So here's my curl call. What I'm going to do is I'm going to curl to uh, where my, my minion server is listening, and I'm going to do a post to, uh, to restart the restart server resource. And we're going to give it a little bit of a JSON document here, box 102. OK, accepted. That was pretty quick. And um, this, we can see the server got, got the uh, job. Thank you very much. And, uh, and returned our accepted message. The worker was listening to the queue and said, hey, there's a job for me to do. It's a restart server job. And it finished. And down here, we can see that we actually slapped the server and, and did what it was supposed to do. Um, that's it. That's, that's, the, um, that's, that's the basically minion there. Uh, this uh, scales well. The workers you can distribute across multiple machines. Um, you can have a uh, variety of servers if you needed to. You could have as many endpoints as you want. It's a very powerful, uh, powerful pattern. Any questions on job queues, minions? Uh, a few odds and ends I wanted to highlight. Um, UTF-8 support in Modulicious is amazing. Uh, I, in no app have I ever loaded the encode module or the UTF-8 module or anything like that, ever. Uh, there would be cases where it might be required, like if I were pulling something from a database and that was specifically encoded in some funky way uh, that I would need to then put it into UTF-8. Uh, but by and large, it works over the web. It works uh, in URLs. You can have UTF-8 little snowmen in your URLs, whatever you like. Um, UTF-8 support is spectacular and modulicious. Um, if you install IOSocket, SSL, you will get TLS support out of the box, not only for your Mojo user agent for making HTTPS requests, but also for serving. You can serve, you can make your Mojolicious light application. You just give it the certificate and the, 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 the various um, uh, files that are required with that, the bundle file, and it will serve HTTPS for you. Um, SNI, server name indication. This allows multiple host names to be served with one IP and one 
uh, and, and multiple certificates, TLS certs, very nice. That's kind of a new web thing, and Mojalicious supports it. Uh, Mojalicious is 25% smaller today than it was in 2010. 2010 had about 12,000 lines of code, today we're about 8,000 lines of code. So it gets faster, better, and smaller. Uh, tests, Mojalicious has about 95% test coverage. There are very few modules on CPAN that have this level of test coverage. These are serious developers who operate here and they have extremely high standards uh, for their production. Um, you, can, you can take that to the bank. 11,000 tests. Uh, in fact, I have, um, well, I'll tell you about that in a moment. Uh, integration, as you've seen, all of the tools, p pieces of the toolkit are designed to work well together. Uh, the community support is excellent. They've got the, the Google uh, email group, uh, they've got um, the chat room, and the people are very responsive and very friendly. Uh, the documentation is very good. Um, I'll, I'll mention one thing about uh, um, tests. Uh, I, I, had a, uh, I had a TLS patch. I needed support for something on a certificate that wasn't built in. We, there was a discussion of whether it was needed or not. It was finally determined it was fine. So I wrote the code and said, here's, you know, it's just a few lines uh, to, to deal with the certificate in a certain way, set some flags. And they said, well, where, where's your test? I mean, it's just two lines, you know. I mean, no, we need some tests. So it took me the next like three days to write, come up with a way to test this thing. Um, the bulk of my work was definitely writing the tests. And, and that gives you an idea of the, this level of community. Testing is hard. It's way harder than development to do it thoroughly. Uh, at least it takes a lot more time. And so um, that's, that's the kind of uh, rigor that, that you expect uh, and, and find in the Mojulicious community. Um, we do not have time for this. Um, any other questions? I think we're pretty close to the time, aren't we? What time is it? It's time? Okay. Any questions? All right. Thanks for your time. <laughs>